please go subscribe to the Rumble channel for Franchise Sports TV under the name FSTV22. Now, I'm using that Rumble channel for any purposes of me getting kicked off YouTube and also for more of my spicier joints. It's free as well. I have the freedom to say whatever I want to say as well. So go subscribe to FSTV22. That is Franchise Sports TV 22 on Rumble. Well, I had this game circled on the calendar for a long time now. This Texas versus Packers game. The battle of the light skins. The battle of the light skinned brothers from California. One being from Central California. The other being from SoCal. Not too far from where I'm from. And it did not disappoint. Packers defense, I was really impressed with. But before I get into that, like, share, subscribe. I know some of you guys ain't Packers fans out there. I don't know if I had any Texans fans out there. I'd be surprised if I do. But I like, share, subscribe. This is a rarity that I post a video on a Sunday. Usually I come back Monday posting videos. But anyways, this, it also seems like the Packers field goals miscues have been somewhat alleviated but we're gonna find out when we go see for the rest of the season but the Packers win 24 22 off a decent performance from the Packers defense holding CJ Stroud to 86 yards passing 10 for 21 no touchdowns sacked four times with a rating of 58.8 it was magnificent but on the other side, we had a passing game that had been shut down. But Joe Mixon ran for 115 yards, but that was their only source of offense because, like I said, C.J. Stroud, he was getting crunched in the pocket. Uh, Joe Mixon ran for 115 yards, averaging 4.6 a carry, two touchdowns, as long as his 32-yarder. Uh... That was pretty much their offense. They didn't have too much offense. Uh, Stephon Diggs was held to 23 yards with five attempts. Uh, five attempts, five catches, I mean. Uh, there wasn't much going on. Tank Dell had four targets, but he didn't catch anything. Dalton Schultz had one catch for 28 yards. Uh, Xavier Hutchinson, one catch for 11 yards, a crucial catch they caught. That could have been the game ceiling. Well, I can say it was the game ceiling. But on the other side, the Packers, Jordan Love threw for 220 yards, three touchdowns, but he has to cut down on those damn interceptions. Someone came to me earlier this week, I was talking about this team, and said Jordan Love is like a mixture of um, Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre. Starting to seem true. But he threw for two interceptions. He got sacked three times with a rating of 95.5. Josh Jacobs had 12 carries, 76 yards. But he did have one receiving touchdown, his first in his career. Um, Packers didn't really have too much of a running game. And they only ran for 82 yards combined on 22, uh, not on 22, but on 20 carries. Oh, uh, Romeo Dobbs had 94 yards. Devontae Wicks had 48 yards for one touchdown. Tucker Craft had 33 yards for one touchdown as well. Jeez. This stupid ass computer, I swear to God. Like I said, Josh Jacobs. Call for 16 yards and a touchdown. Jaden Reed eh, didn't have the game that he had last week. Sorry. But he did catch two catches for 10 yards. But the Packers defense, like I said, they really came alive. This Evan Williams, I think he's a rookie or second year. But he is really, really starting to impress out there. These guys are getting to it. Eric Wilson had two sacks today. Uh, Xavier McKinney has pretty much quiet down. He, had, he didn't get an interception today, but he did have five tackles. And Rashard Gary finally showed up. I was questioning, where the heck has he been at? 
when he finally showed up. He was pressuring uh, C.J. Stroud a lot in this game. He didn't have one sack, but he was getting to the quarterback, making C.J. Stroud uh, just throw, had to throw the ball out of bounds, throwing stupid passes all over the place. But the real drama in this game is one thing I'm worried about also is Packers' run defense. Last week against the Arizona Cardinals, they had success, but this week, Joe Mixon ran for 115 yards. And I think two, three weeks before that, against the Vikings, um, Aaron Jones had a good game against them, too. If they can clean up that running game, this defense, and they play like they did today in the passing defense, they can put everything together. This defense will be deadly. It will be scary. Uh towards the end of the season. They just need to clean up the offense. They need to clean up the offense and clean up these damn turnovers and stupid-ass penalties. Uh, one of the reasons why this game should be uh, actually the lead for the Packers should have been bigger than what it was if they didn't fumble the ball on the punt return in the second half, which uh, caused the Texans to go down and score on the Packers 11. I think it was 11 a lot yard line. But they gotta clean up those mistakes, clean up those turnovers. And this team will be set. Uh, they needed to win this game because now I think the Vikings won. No, Vikings lost to the Lions. Lions are now in first place. I think the Bears have a bye. I think they do. So they, it was a much needed win because next week they play Jacksonville. But towards the end of this game, it finally it looks like they finally figured out their field goal problems because their new field goal kicker that they received this week, I should say last week now, uh, they signed last week. They got rid of the old kicker, got a new kicker. Got him, I think it's Brandon. Uh, I forgot his name. I think he used to be the kicker for the Carolina, not Carolina Panthers. I think he was on the Carolina Panthers, but also the kicker for the Denver Broncos when he won the championship, won the Super Bowl. Um... Brandon, I can't even pronounce his last name. I'm probably going to mess up his uh, name. Brandon Magnantis. Yeah. Kicked the game with him field goal today to win this game and send the Packers to a 5-2 and two record. 3-1 and one at home and sending the Houston Texans back home with an L. And the Texans are 500 on the road. Mm. Anyways, but yeah, they needed this win. Um, they're now five and two in the division. This division, NFC North, can possibly send four teams, at, at least three teams, but possibly can send four teams to the uh, playoffs. Because now they got seven teams, right? So they need three other teams. Three other teams will probably be the division winners. And the way it looks like, uh, you possibly could have, well, you got the Haw I mean, Hawks, Falcons, Saints. No, not the Saints, at the Saints. The Saints are going downtown. Uh, Saints and Buccaneers in that division, NFC South. NFC East might be two teams, but I think one's going to get in, depending on who's going to be the Redskins or Eagles, because the Cowboys are garbage, and the Giants are mega garbage. Uh, coming out of the West... I don't know about the Rams. I think the Rams might be, this might be a down season for them. I don't know about the Cardinals. Possibly the Seahawks or the 49ers. But whoever wins that division, of course, is going to get in. <sighs> Sorry. But possibly three teams could be coming from the NFC North. Possibly. Depending on. The Bears, Packers, Vikings, and Lions keep on winning the way they do. You could see four. Maybe. Somebody's not going to make it. Somebody with a winning record somewhere in one of these divisions ain't going to make it. But anyways, Packers get the big time win. 24-22 to play the Jacksonville Jaguars. Next uh, week, I think they play them in Jacksonville. Because the last... 
see here. I think they play them in Jacksonville. And Jacksonville won their second game today against the number one pick. They gonna be the. They gonna have the number one pick in the uh, New England Patriots. So, let's see that game on the road right quick. The Packers, in order for them to get back into the first spot in the NFC North, they gonna have to dig deep and uh, really beat these teams. Um, shoot, so they got Jacksonville next. Then they got the juggernaut. And when I mean, yeah, they in Jacksonville. And what I mean by that, they got the Lions. Then they got the Bears. Then they got, uh, what's the name of the team? The 49ers. So, after the Jacksonville, they got the juggernaut of a schedule right there. And then they go into a bye week, I think. Should go into the bye week. One of these weeks they gotta go into the bye week. Yeah, and then they got the bye week coming up soon. With in between that also. So we shall see. When is the next Friday? Sunday night game. They don't even have a Sunday night game. Sorry. They don't have a Sunday night game until the end of November. This game should have been a Sunday night game, Texas and Packers, but whatever. They don't get a Sunday night game until freaking, it looks like Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving's on the 28th. That's crazy. They ain't got another one on the 15th of December against the Seahawks. No, they actually got back-to-back -back night games. Sunday night and Monday night. But anyways, go Pack Go.